ownership. Ownership specific, first person, gender neutral, or plural. But your, but your uh, prepositions are going to be your, uh, the correct way by which this is mathematically certified. Now my computer that I use to write these documents is, has, I guess you could say, artificial intelligence because it has learned through all the thousands of contracts that have gone through it that if I use the wrong preposition or I put two with together, two ofs together, that I'll get a red line, a green line, or a blue line under my prepositional phrase telling me that's not the standard by which you have established in this computer and I'll have to go back and look at it a second time. And if I put too many facts in, but I don't have enough prepositions, it means the sentence was written in incorrectly in the first place. And I've got to go back, and maybe a word has been out of a location where two words were backwards. Because an individual, I have, uh, I'm ambidextrous. I write both my left hand and my right hand. I write frontwards and backwards, and in both directions with both hands. So, my ability to see things backwards as well as frontwards simultaneously, if I'm moving too fast, I might put two words inadvertently in the wrong place and when I read it back or I read the sentence backwards to check the math to see if it was done in the correct format, going forward, it now shows me that I did something wrong and I've got to go back and reread it. I might even take a day off, come back the very next day and go and read it again with a fresh thought I'm going like, that doesn't make any sense at all. And I'll pull out a word or put in a word or get the book of synonyms and put a correct synonym in there and line it up so it makes sense. So that the entire document, just like when you write a story, you have to be in a, in a, a flow with that storyline. So any questions about sentence structure or parts of speech? All right, the next thing we're going to do the laws were originally established, like the Roman Empire was around 3,000 years with the Latin. And before that, you had Arabic with the, with the Egyptian. You had Persia, which was a, uh, the ruling bank for 6,000 years between Asia and Europe. You had the Indian nations and the Chinese nations with 6,000 years of grammar. And the Persia was right in the middle of it all because everybody through the trade, what we call the spice routes or the trade routes. So, in order to put this together mathematically, I had to study history going back to Gothics, which is roughly 8,500 years ago when language was first instructed. And then the parts of speech, just to identify the order of operations of the parts of speech, took, took me six years of research. It was buried in Cornell University's dictionary, which is four feet thick, containing every word of every symbol in all 5,000 languages in written history. That's why it's a four foot thick dictionary. It's cost 6,000 bucks for that dictionary. But when I found out what the parts of speech were, if you go into a styles manual, they'll give you one definition. If you go into your dictionary styles manual, you'll get another definition. But when you go into Cornell University's dictionary, you find out about the time of the future and the past, as well as the parts of speech and how they were used. Now with 68 prepositions and 38 articles, we only use seven of the, of the positions and only five of the articles. And with that, we built this program. Now the next thing I'm gonna go over is the physical mechanics of what goes on in a courtroom. And then we're going to syntax a document from the, all of your mortgages. When you go into a courtroom, you're in a multi-plane area. Now, any level playing field of legal sports, whether it be in the Olympics or in the condition of a, let's a little more. When you're in a position, if you've got a football, soccer, baseball, uh, tennis, ping pong, it doesn't matter what your game is, basketball, baseball, you always have a level playing field in sports because of the contest between individuals, skill sets. But when you walk into a courtroom, you have, multi, you have five different planes that exist to break up the continuance of evidence within that courtroom. 
So what happens here is the judge puts himself on plane number one, which is higher than anyone else in the courtroom. And the judge says, well, if you look under federal rules of civil procedure 44.1, it says that the judge is a foreign entity sitting in a foreign jurisdiction. And all human beings that come into the courtroom are foreign people or foreign vessels. And they babble because of the communication skills that they, that they speak in in adverb verb, or adverb adjective pronoun, pronoun adverb verb, and pronoun adverb adjective pronoun. Those are four different concepts. Also, they have a concept of adverb verb, adverb verb, adverb verb, and they don't use any adjectives or any pronouns. So the judge sets himself up in his, on his independent plane. Then they ask the witness to come up and stand in a, inside a box. A witness box is an area where the witness cannot be heard or seen and cannot present evidence. The jury is plane number three. A jury, J-U means outlaw or no law, and R-Y means contract. That's called par se, because the jury is in the laws of the United States require a 12-man jury. Well, one little difference is you have the, the jury box, but there's two different planes. Six people sit here and six people sit there. So you have two petite juries of six and six, which is not a 12-man jury. And they put it in a box, and if you look up the word jury box in Black's Law Dictionary, it says an area where people cannot see witnesses or hear evidence. So again, we're dealing with trickery, deception, and illusions. The, the clerk of the court is the individual that files evidence, puts stamps on, on documents, signs her name or his name across the stamp as the postmaster, the banker, and the clerk of the court. So who is the judge? Well, when you look at judges, it says see bankers and see postmasters. When you look at postmasters, it says see judges and bankers. So who, is the, who runs the court? The clerk of the court runs the court, and the actor sits on, a, on the stage of the highest position. When you go into a, a theater, which you, you have your, your theater seating, which goes up, and then you have a stage. And an actor stands on the stage because the actor is on a contract. But the continuance of evidence between the actor and the people sitting in different levels of the theater are broken so that there is no insult between what is acting and what is viewing. Now the actor, ACT, is a vowel and two consonants, which means no contract. So there's no continuance of evidence between the actor and the audience. The same thing in the, in the courtroom. You have, there's no continuance of evidence between the actor and what is going on in the courtroom. Now all the grammar that is used in the courtroom between the attorneys, the lawyers, the judge, are all fictitiously conveyed. Because in the world of fiction, six plus six equals all numbers in the universe, excuse me, three plus three equals all numbers in the universe in the world of fiction except six. In the world of the fact, three plus three equals six. And there can be no other conclusion to that statement. But if you say it is two plus two equal four, T-O plus T-O-O equals F-O-R. T-W-O and T-O-O equals F-O-R-E. Did you hear what I said, what I meant when I said, what I said, what I meant, what I said? The point I just made to you is that if you get into an oral argument, the terminology of your definitions are lost in the, tra in the translation of sound. Therefore, Pharaoh, in 4700 BC said, so it is written, so it shall be done. The reason for that is you have to write the facts down and use the correct sentence structure, communication, parse syntax, grammar. Otherwise, the information or the formation of what you are uh, saying to another individual will not be accepted. You have to be correct. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take this first sentence. This comes from the Fannie Mae Freddie Mac mortgage. It's on page 12 of the mortgage. And what we, it contains 43 words. And I'm gonna go ahead and syntax this using the number system on the chart here. 
Now, borrower is going to be a pronoun. Shall is going to be an adverb in the future time. So I give it a 1.9. Be then becomes a verb. So we give it a 2. In is an adverb making default to mean no fault as a verb. If now becomes a pronoun for any becomes an adverb making action ACT, a vowel and two consonants. So this becomes a no, a no contract because an act means no and ION is contract. So we have a no contract word used here as a verb.